Hi, my name is Janice Bain and today's lesson is all about putting spreadsheet data into a database. This is going to be part one of two lessons. Um, this first lesson will deal with just putting the, the data into the database and the second lesson will just be the, the cosmetic part of just tidying it up and making it look really nice. Let's have a quick look at our data here, at our field names. Notice that there are no spaces in them. This is absolutely great if you're putting them into a database because it just makes working um, with the field names so much easier. Don't worry if there are spaces though, this is something you can deal with effortlessly later on, so don't worry about that. Let's have a look at the data just to see what kind of types of tables we're going to have. So we obviously have customers here, so we have first name, surname, address, town, postcode, so we're going to have a customer table. We have a trip ID. Now this looks as if it's going to be an absolutely great primary key, a unique identifier for a trip table. And we have the cost of the journey, the cost of the trip, booking date. Now salespeople, so we're obviously going to have a sales reps table. Vaccination required, that's going to go into the, the trip table, so is the trip. Photo is quite ambiguous, but I'm, at the moment I'm just going to put that into the, the trip. Table and we can add photos of the Grand Canyon, Mount McKinley, etc. later. Equally, it could be interpreted that it's it's a picture of the salesperson. We could do that too. But I'm just going to go for the trip. The sales region would be in the, the sales rep table. Start date, finish date of the trip. So that's obviously trip information. Let's scroll across and see what else we have. Visa, so that's going to be in the, the trip table. I'm just going to close that down. Again, to Microsoft Access. I'm using 2007, but 2010 works exactly the same way. Let's get into our external data. Import from Excel. Now, I have saved my spreadsheet file in the desktop just so that we can find it easily. Here we are, East Climbers Holidays. We have two choices here. Let's pick the first one. Import the source data into a new table in the current database. Say OK. This first window is just making sure that the, the first row contains column headings. So if this box is not ticked, please do so. Then this is just dealing with our data types. The trip ID is double which is absolutely fine. I'm going to change it just to an integer just now. Double up is absolutely fine, but you're, you're probably used to dealing with integers for for numbers. Um, it's indexed. I'm going to use this as a primary key, so I'm going to put no duplicates. Now, when you click this as a primary key later, that would have happened by default, but this gives me an opportunity just to show what this can do. Let's go into first name text, surname, text, you can go through all of it absolutely fine, look here, this is currency but it, it's going to import just fine, so just say next. Now the next one here is asking one of three things, should we let access choose a primary key, should we choose our own or have no primary key? So I'm actually going to choose my own primary key and I'll tell you why, if we let access put one in, it's going to be exactly the same as the trip ID. There is no need. So let's just pick this one. It's going to import into a table called original data, which is exactly what we want. Now this is the really important bit. When you get to this, do not hit finish. What you're going to do is you're going to tick this little box here. I would like a wizard to analyze my table and then click finish. It's going to say the wizard is now ready to analyze the table. Great. Now, I imagine most of you are familiar with this, but it's, um, it's really worth reading. It gives you great examples of the advantages of a relational table over a, a flat table. But we're not going to read it just now. We don't have time for that. And you should know it by now. I'm going to hit next. I'm going to hit next again. And now we have the option of letting the wizard decide on our tables or let's decide ourselves. I am going to let us decide ourselves. So I'm going to say next. And here we have our one very large table, which is still a 
flat file database. Let's make it into a, relig uh, a relational table. I'm going to take the first name and move it over here. I'm going to call this our customer table. So I'm going to just put T for table, JB for my initials. Now remember, you don't need to put JB, your initials in when you're working. But if it's a whole group of students, they're all printing off the same thing, then this is going to help you identify your work. Right, make this a bit bigger. Now it's already given us a primary key, which is great. So let's move over. Surname, address, town, and postcode. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create our sales reps table. So I'm going to move this over here. Sales reps, it's a table, and again, I'm just going to put in my initials. So we have sales surname, commission, and region. Okay, so this is looking good. What we're going to do now is we don't want a table one. I think we can think of a better name than that. So I'm just going to call this trips. It's a table in my initials. So let's have a wee look at this. We have primary keys. One we decided on ourselves. The others were created for us. They've been generated. And there is a relationship here from the customer table. This is done through a lookup. You can see referential integrity has been applied or we wouldn't be get, getting looking exactly like this. And here we have a primary key. And again, that's looking up to the sales rep. So it's absolutely perfect. So as well as referential integrity, you'll realize later in the next lesson that Cascade updates has um, been ticked, but Cascade deletes hasn't. This happens by default, which is exactly what we want. So that's great. Let's click Next. Now, this is correcting typographical errors for table customer. It is really worth looking at these, but I actually can't see anything I would like to change. So I'm going to just say Next. Yes, I absolutely do want to move away from this page. I don't need to create a query. It's saying the commander action of tile horizontally isn't available just now. That's absolutely fine by me. We don't need to save these steps. This is virtually a one-off for us. Okay, and let's see what we have. We have three tables with no typing at all involved. So let me just resize these just a wee bit for us. So we have the sales reps tables, and as you can see, they're linked. We have the sales rep Angela Bain, and she has been selling trips to Everest, Angkor Wat, I think I pronounced that okay, and the Taj Mahal. I'll just close this one down. We have the customer table with 15 customers, no typing involved, absolutely wonderful. And we have the trips table with our 20 trips already organized, which is just great. I'm going to close that down. And that is our lesson finished.